He marketed himself as a savior for the exploited and downtrodden, a man with a plan fighting for their rights. And when he's not carrying the hopes of the hopeless on his shoulders, he's indulging his passion for flying. Or is Jonathan Constable not quite what he claims to be? Here's Derek. The dawn of a new era has upon us. Let us hope, let us pray, pray. But this man saves the day. This is Jonathan Constable. As a self-proclaimed savior of South Africa, Constable fights corruption, assists with labor law issues, facilitates conveyancing and corporate transactions, and so much more. And on top of all that, he is a pilot, or at least so he claims. Fake police officers, fake soldiers, fake doctors. In a world of fakes, it's hard to tell what's real anymore. Voila! So now I'm dressed like a pilot. But you wouldn't want me at the controls of any aircraft. Constable's Facebook page states he received his pilot's training at Priority Air Transport. A Google search most closely links the name Priority Air Transport to a battalion of the United States Army. Which must be why Constable posted this badge on Facebook. But which country Constable served as a pilot and or a soldier is unclear. After all, 52-year-old Constable is South African. I can't see it. How can you fly a plane if you're not a pilot? If Constable is the villain in this piece, then Monica Bowers the hero. As an independent investigator, she's been on his trail for years. I have asked even at the airports, please find this guy's license. It's not there. It is here at the South African Airways Museum Society in Germiston in this 1971 Boeing, where we suspect Constable took these blurry images. It all seems like fun and games, but in reality, Constable has been arrested 19 times for various offenses since the 1980s. And if Constable's flights of fancy were limited to only being an airman, it would be mildly amusing. But it's here that our story takes a sinister turn. Today he's the pilot, tomorrow he's a home affairs official, then he's in special training forces with the cops. He's CI. Uh, he's been everywhere else, even in Iraq fighting. Constable is also the self-professed president of his organization, Nixa. Depending on the day, Nixa is a political party, a trade union, an NGO, an immigration agency, or an undercover operation. He is, he's got quite a portfolio and also something to do with housing. That is why they say he is one of the best hijacker of a hijacked building in South Africa. In 2017, Constable, through Nixa, approached Nomusa Nanela and her fellow tenants at a house they were renting in Rosettenville, Johannesburg, offering to protect them from what he called fake landlords who were charging exorbitant rentals. He said we cannot pay the rent to someone who doesn't have ownership of the house. All Namusa had to do was pay his Nixa membership fees. We'll be paying him e registration E1.5 and every month we'll be paying 500 rand for our membership. Effectively, Constable was encouraging tenants to withhold their rent from their landlords. Greg Vermark is a property lawyer who has previously crossed legal swords with Constable. Constable will come into a building and he will say, these guys who you are paying rent to don't own the building. There's some fraud, there's some takeover. They are in fact the hijackers, so do not pay them. What you must do is join my organization and I will look after you, protect you. That's the classic hijack play. Business was booming for Constable, and in 2021, 
Now, Moses says he approached her again, but this time he convinced her to leave her job and join Nixa as an administrator. And he also contracted this man. He owed a security company, which Constable supposedly wanted to use, to evict people he couldn't extort for Nixa membership fees. So this whole complex mm -hmm. was hijacked. I mean, yeah, it's a big complex. It is big, eh? A lot of people affected. Yeah, he hijacked all these blocks. At the time, Lutando says he believed Constable's dealings were above board. What were your feelings about uh, the families being evicted? I had to do the job that they employed me for, to do the evictions. But sometimes I feel pity for them because you can see them, they're crying. Others, they don't have money to pay rentals. They were having a lot of um, yeah. uh, problems. Poverty is a big problem. And uh, especially the areas we operate in, it's the lower end of the market. Louis Bergenstock manages and administers residential properties in Johannesburg South. In March 2021, trouble started. The whole building stopped paying immediately in one month. Now, sometimes you do get problems with tenants. You'll have one or two problems, but if a whole building all of a sudden just stops and they used to be good payers, something must be wrong. Constable allegedly hijacked at least four buildings managed by Louis's company. And when Louis eventually evicted non-paying tenants, Constable apparently became infuriated, showing up at his offices with a gun. But luckily, immediately, she ran to the back. We were all sitting in the back office hiding and away there. There is an outstanding warrant of arrest for Constable relating to the incident. The funny thing is the guy is driving around here and the police know the guy. Even if you do you try to arrest the guy, he's, he's untouchable. Lutanda told us he was never paid by constable for his security services. He owes me 85,000 rand. Nomoso also says she never got her promised salary. And when she reminded constable he owed her, it cost her dearly. He threatened us, I'll come after you. I know where you are staying, I know your kids. And Nomoso says he made good on his threat. Shockingly, Constable allegedly weaponized his police contacts to arrest and torture her. He hit me. He pushed me. He put some handcuffs like this. My hands, they were bleeding that time. And if that humiliation wasn't enough, it got worse when she was flung into Johannesburg prison, known as Sun City. What I passed through that time, it was not easy. Really, it was not easy. Asking myself, what did I do? Sun City, it's cold. That was my first time for seven days without brushing your teeth, without using a toilet, without using a soap to bath. Seven days for something that I did not do it. Jonathan and his crew, they need to pay. They need to pay big time. Nomosa says she was charged with drug possession, but she didn't have any drugs on her and believes Constable was behind her arrest. When did you last hear from Jonathan Constable? The time he was calling me, he wanted to help me to destroy my case. He said I must raise 10,000. Constable apparently sent Nomosa a voice note with instructions. Make sure that you are here nine o'clock and also make sure that you have the 10,000 with you. Nemosa says she did not take Constable up on his offer and her drug possession case is ongoing. This is Rosettenville in the south of Johannesburg with a significant immigrant population where some complainants say that Constable approached them with a niche and a totally phony service offering. In addition to allegedly hijacking buildings, not paying contractors, and intimidating his detractors, Constable offered to resettle refugees from war-torn countries for a hefty fee. Monica, what was he promising? Um, new lives uh, with visas that he got from the embassy here in South Africa, Canadian embassy. As a self-proclaimed immigration expert, 
in a pilot's uniform no less, he could get refugees to Canada, something only the United Nations High Commission for Refugees, or UNHCR, is allowed to do. What is he charging? If it's a family, 75,000 rand. 75,000? 75,000 rand. Some people sold all their belongings because they were leaving and it never materialized. To run the resettlement scam, Constable allegedly created a WhatsApp group where he would keep the refugees updated. Um, all of you whose documents have been submitted next week, Thursday, please be ready. 30 people was on the group, 30 people were conned. He was using an actual visa from the Canadian Embassy. But when I received all the information, it was obviously verified as fake. This is the closest the refugees ever came to Canada, the High Commission in Pretoria, with this visa that Constable is believed to have doctored. The Canadian High Commission states it is aware of the allegations, and the UNHCR says it's investigating. As you investigated, what shocked you the most about him? The fact that he was well connected, the fact that the people are so scared of him. And the other thing that he was so well protected. Whoever I contacted in my network with this, everybody knew about Jonathan. We called Constable for his side to the many stories we'd been told. Hi, is that Jonathan Constable? <laughs> Constable ultimately made contact with carte blanche and vehemently denies all allegations made by his accusers. We asked the National Prosecuting Authority and Departments of Justice and Home Affairs for comment. We are still awaiting their response. I have all the proof. I have forwarded it on to the Canadian Embassy. I have forwarded it on to Home Affairs. I have forwarded it on to the CI and nothing has been done. As Jonathan Constable continues to roam freely, his alleged victims wonder, where is the justice? Thanks for watching. Have you heard about our new podcast? It's like carte blanche, but without the Sunday blues. Find carte blanche the podcast with new episodes uploaded weekdays on all major podcast platforms. Unique stories, Unique perspectives wherever you go.